Krishna. Now, the line here is very unstable. So sometimes when I speak, there may be a break. You may not get everything I say. So you have to tell me. Okay, Guru Maharaj. You, you know, yeah, you understand, right? So just yes. now when you were singing, I only heard half the mantra because it, the sound broke. So anyway, uh, okay, so I saw you advertised that this is an, a meditation class, right? I saw the poster saying meditation. Yeah. So I, I thought maybe I'll speak about uh, mantra meditation, mind control, like that. Is it all right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Excellent. And I, I was looking over some of my old PowerPoint presentations and I found one on mind control. I thought I'd show you it this afternoon for a while. You can just have a look at it. it I, we did it years ago, but still it's, it's relevant today. Mm -hmm. you know, it's the same process. Nothing has really changed. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just go on, into the PowerPoint and let you see. Okay, everybody all right with this? Based on the teachings of His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Jai Prabhupada. Jai Srila Prabhupada. Yeah? Jai. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can see it's kind of outdated uh, presentation, but I'll go through it quickly, you know. Uh, modern advanced society, some hidden facts, always on the rise. What things are on the rise? What's increasing? Any, any, any guesses? Corruption. Corruption, that's a good guess. Yeah, well, here's one. Violence. Anything else? Corruption? Yeah. Selfishness and fear. Fear, selfishness. Yeah, these things are all on the rise, right? As well as unemployment. A lot of unemployment with this virus. Many people unemployed now, everywhere. I, I just heard yesterday, there's 100,000 people in Dubai, no job, Indian, want to come back to India, but no flight. <laughs> so India government are trying to arrange to bring them back, but it's a lot of people. Unemployment, so unemployment and then murder, suicide also, all of these things. Then you said, of course, corruption, that's also there. And then stress, all the stress, the anxiety, the whole thing. Oh, all of these things increasing, right? That, oh my God, oh, all these horrible things, yeah. And here's violence, the communal violence. Remember that? The rioting, the unrest. I don't know where it is. Threat of war, terrorism is always there. All of these things every year, you know, they don't really change. Time magazine poll. I don't see much of time these days. Main problems facing society today, crime, lack of morality. The prisons in America, a lot of people, many people, not only in America. And why? Because so many guns, so many murders, South Africa, rape, Finnish school. Of course, nowadays they don't watch television they're watching their handphone. It's much more, they watch much more now. Much more. 8,000 murders. Average child, aged 
8,000 murders, 100,000 acts of violence. Drug users in European Union, so that's your hometown, your home ground. A lot of people, a lot of drug addiction there. Is it 7.4 million? We thought the coronavirus is a lot of people, but <laughs> the drugs are more. Serious drug users in European Union, one point, this, this was 20 years ago. <laughs> it's much more now. And then the divorce rate, again, this is 20 years ago, it's more now. Of course, nowadays people don't even marry because they don't, they think, what's the point? We'll get divorced anyway. So they just live together for some time. Anyway, this is the, the kind of society we're living in. Then suicides also a lot in America, Bangalore, number one suicide city of India. A lot of young people there, a lot of people go to college, a lot of people are trying to make big time, make big money, <laughs> and they're not doing very well. Now Bangalore's the red zone, right? I, that was the year 2000, <laughs> you know? Are we really advancing? Where are we going? Why, why there is much chaos and confusion in the society? What has gone, gone wrong with the society? Srila Prabhupada explains, a pack of dogs in a room, how can we expect to have peace? Right? You put some dogs in the room, they just fight with each other. So if people have the dogish mentality, they're no different from dogs in the room. So from the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna gives some instruction to Arjuna. Bandur atmatmanastashya yenatmaiv atmanajita anatmanas to shatratve varte tatmaiva shatravat. Right? That this is about the friend and the enemy, right? The mind can be the friend and the mind can be the enemy. For one who has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friends. But for one who has failed to do so, his mind will remain the greatest enemy. Right? So we have that choice to make the mind the friend. Of course, it's, it's not an easy thing to conquer the mind, to train the mind. We're trying. <laughs> you can see the gentleman in an angry mood, jumping and yelling, and clenching his fist. What can it do to you? Well, it can give you a lot of problems if you behave like that. If you get so disturbed like that, your blood pressure will go up. You can risk having a heart attack. It is really not a very wise thing, not a very wise way to behave. We really have to learn how to control the mind and become a little detached from the situations. Some things will definitely make us, some things will, situations will not be very pleasing to us, but ultimately we have to accept. We should not be overly disturbed. So when the mind is not properly controlled, we, we don't have confidence. We don't have trust. We become, and we do a lot of damage to the family, to the society, as well as ourselves. That's the real problem, damage to our own self. It affects our own, our own, our own health, our own well-being. And people will also look at you like that. Oh, he's an angry man. They will avoid you. They won't want to trust you. They won't have faith in you. And then also, because the mind is not controlled, sometimes 
depression will also be there. That we become very depressed, we don't have confidence and faith in ourselves or in the world. Nowadays, with this virus going around, many people are suffering from depression. Being stuck in their home for a long period of time, no work, no opportunity to maintain their life, to earn a living, they become very depressed. It's very discouraging for people. Stress, hypertension, dangerous diseases, weakened, huh, what, weakness, weakened, weakened determination should be. Oh, I've got this thing in the way here, move this. Weakened determination. So all of these things, not very desirable. None of these things, we don't, we want to avoid all of these things. So they're so important for us to learn how to train the mind, to conquer the mind. So this, this of course is the whole purpose of yoga and meditation, to control the mind and senses. Here you can see some photographic presentations of different situations in the world. We're looking for peace and happiness, but at the same time, there's so much violence, there's so much threat of war, tension. Now, even so many people are hungry, they're not getting food. Devotees are busy going out distributing food, trying to distribute food to the hungry people, people not even able to eat. So the solution to all these problems, we really have to get control over the mind. <laughs> Here, with, this is not the mind. Anyway, this is it. In the picture we've shown there, don't think that's really the mind. That's the brain. The mind is some other place. Mind is in the heart. But this is, this is the brain. Of course, brain is like the computer. The mind is different. So before understanding the mind, there's a very important question to under to be answered right? we, we want to control the mind we have to understand the nature of the mind how it works what is its thinking so an important question most fundamental question who am i right if we get this wrong then we can never control the mind. We'll never be successful, whatever we do, if we get this, this question wrong. And people sometimes think, well, I know this, but the, the, we may have heard it before, but we have to also realize it. We have to realize it. We have to be able to apply the understanding of who I am, actually am. We have to put it into practice. It's not just simply a matter of repeating or just simply memorizing. We have to actually realize it and we have to be able to act on that platform also. So, who am I? In the early years of 20th century, scientists analyzed the constituents of the human body. Wanting to understand ourselves, let's analyze the human body. Total worth of chemicals, right? Within the body, you can see the, diff the main chemicals there. Calcium, iron, phosphorus, some water content, and a few other traces of other things. So this is what's in the body. The body is made up basically of these different chemicals. 
You know the value of these chemicals? Rupees, 210. Means about $3, right? <laughs> That's the value of our body. Not worth a lot of money. But we're very attached to these chemicals. So, are we just a bag worth 210 rupees? What actually are we? Who are we? We pay a lot. We spend a lot of money for the body. But who, who actually are we? We're just simply living in the body, right? Here's the key verse from the Bhagavad Gita. In, in Krishna's uh, teaching to Arjuna, he began by teaching, first of all, the science of the soul. Because it's the first thing. The first thing is to understand the nature of the soul, the difference between the body and the soul. The, who, is, who, who, who actually are we? So this verse answers. Dehinosmin yata dehe komaram yovanam jara tata dehantara prapya diras tatra namuyati. Right? So we're changing the body from the komar, the boy, to the youth, jara, to the old man. Right? But Dira is tantra namuyati. We, sh we should remain dira. We should not be confused. We should remain sober. Even though we are changing, we're moving from one body to the other. We shouldn't be disturbed by it. Here's the famous illustration from the BBT books. The changing body. The body changes but the person is the same. What, who is that person? That person is the spiritual particle, the soul within the body. And that soul is moving through from one body to another body. When the one body becomes old and useless, when we die, then the soul leaves that body, enters another body. Of course, there's no guarantee that we'll always have the human body. We have to give up one body, take another body, according to our qualification and our association with the modes of nature. We quote another verse from Bhagavad Gita. Krishna gives an, an, an analogy. Vashamsi jarnani yata vihaya Navani krenati naroparani tata sharirani vihaya jnani anyani samyati navani dehi. Right? This is about the, the garments. We change the clothes. Here you can see young man in different dresses, but he's the same man. He's just changed the dress. The same way we change the body. We take one body, and then when we get tired of that one body, or when it gets broken down, or oh, we give it up, we take another body. Just like we change the dress. And so the man's playing cricket, he's got his cricket clothes on, and then other times he's going to work, going to office. He's got different dresses for different occasions. But the person is the same. The person doesn't change. Who is that person? We want to understand. The car cannot move without the driver. There must be the driver there. Who is the driver? Similarly, the body cannot function without its driver, the soul. Within the car, there's a soul. And then we often present this example, another analogy, the chariot of the body. Right here you can see chariot, 
five horses with a driver and a passenger on the chariot. So the five horses represent the five senses. You can, we have, a, we have the hands of the skin for touching things. We have our eyes, our nose for smelling, our ears for hearing, our tongue for tasting, and our skin for touch. So five knowledge acquiring senses. Right? like the five horses and then these horses are controlled by the reins and that the reins are compared to the mind because the mind directs the senses the mind has desire and the mind the desires of the mind direct the senses to act in different ways and then the driver holding the reins is compared to intelligence intelligence is higher than the mind intelligence is the ability to discriminate the mind has desires the intelligence will decide which desire is good and which is not and then the passenger on the chariot who is that passenger on the chariot that will be the soul the individual soul Okay, and then what about the chariot? What does the chariot represent? Anybody know? That's the body? Yes, right. Very good. The body, right. So that's good. Now talk about the role of the mind. What's the mind's function? Can the mind be our friend? Well, it's up to us. Just like the knife can be good or bad. In the doctor's hands, the surgeon, he can use the knife to heal and to cure, to save the life. But another person gets the knife, he can kill someone, he threatens to kill people. So the knife can be used to heal or it can be used to kill. It's how we use it. So the mind is the same way. It can be a friend, it can be the enemy. The mind can elevate us, the mind can degrade us. Very important that we learn to control the mind. So, how are we going to control the mind? First of all, we say, do not allow the senses to wander stray in any direction they want right we have to control the senses the senses are powerful right we have five senses which one is the most the strongest the most difficult to control five senses Which one will be the most difficult to control? I would say the tongue. Yes, the tongue. That's the right. Tongue. The tongue is very difficult to control. Before we take prasadam, we have a special prayer which we say. You know that Sharira Vijajal prayer? We say, of all the senses, the tongue is the most voracious and difficult to control. It's very difficult to conquer the tongue. But Krishna is so kind, he has given us this prasadam, Krishna prasadam, just to help us to control the tongue. So we have to be very careful not to just go anywhere and everywhere, eat anything and everything. We have to control the senses, not only the tongue, the eyes, the nose, these things, but the tongue is the most difficult, very difficult to control. If we can control the tongue, then the other senses can also be easily controlled. So try to keep them away from the wrong engagements. Just be careful what we do with the senses. Sometimes we give the example, it's, it's like one man having five wives. We have five senses, so it's like having five wives. You know, when you go shopping, 
the wife will always say, I want to go here, I want to go. There. So if you have five wives, they each want to go different places. So the same way the tongue wants to go somewhere, wants to go somewhere to eat something, the eyes want to go to see something, maybe cinema, and the ears, they want to go and hear the music, uh, uh, listen to something, and then the, the nose wants to smell something. Like this, the sense is very difficult. They're always giving us trouble. We have to try to control the senses. How to control them? Use the senses and the mind in topics relating to God. This is how we can control them, give them some engagement. The senses need to do something. You need to have something to do. We say, I don't mind, it's a devil's workshop. So we have to keep the senses and the mind busy, give them some engagement, some activities. Number three, understand the meaning of life by reading thought-provoking books like Bhagavad Gita. Very powerful. Read the Bhagavad Gita, you get a lot of knowledge, you get a lot of instruction and direction how to improve the quality of our life, how to develop better character. So very important. Then number four, associate with devotees. That's also very powerful in the context. Now, with all this technology, with all this Zoom and everything, we can associate easily. So take advantage and then make the best use of the opportunities for good association. Take advantage of association. Now, we also want to purify the senses by doing things like hearing bhajans, kirtans, doing devotional songs. This is also very nice. We have uh, many devotees, they like to sing every, you know, nowadays it's very popular. They have this karaoke, people like to go and sing. And so in, in, the, in, the, in the past, there was no karaoke. People would simply go sit together and they would sing kirtan and do bhajans, sing different devotional songs, particularly when they go to the temple and see the deities. It's also a very nice thing to do. If you get the opportunity, sometimes you go and visit the temple, see the deities. Then also, of course, you go to the temple, the hope there'll be Krishna Prasadam, and there will be the chanting of the holy names. Very important, the chanting of the holy names. The recommended method for controlling the mind is loudly chanting and hearing the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. This is a recommended process for controlling the mind in this Kali Yuga. Even if the mind is diverted, it will be forced to concentrate on the sound vibration, Krishna. There's a nice verse in the Bhakti scriptures written by one of the great devotees who was a friend of Lord Chaitanya. And he has said, no one knows how much nectar there is in these two syllables, Krish and Na. And he said, there's so much nectar just in these two syllables, Krishna. He said, when I chant the name Krishna, then it conquers the activity of the mind and makes all the senses inert. So this is uh, the power of the holy name, Krishna, that we will experience a special pleasure. The senses, which are so powerful, they become like, they become powerless through the chanting of the holy name. The holy name of Krishna is so powerful and purifying that the senses, they become like, like serpents who've had the poison fangs cut out. You know, in India, sometimes it, there was somebody will come with a box of, with cobras in the basket, 
and he will sit and play his pipe and the cobras will dance. So these cobras usually he will cut out the poison fangs so that they don't bite. So the senses are like poisonous serpents, but when we chant Hare Krishna, then it takes away the poison. So we say, say it isn't necessary to withdraw the mind from everything. It will automatically be withdrawn because it will be concentrated on the sound vibration. We just simply have to chant and the mind will draw to that chanting. So that what are the benefits of this chanting? You get clear intelligence, You'll be able to think better because the, the heart is being cleaned so that you get better direction from the heart. Cool mind. We get free of all the passion and the anger and attention which is there in the mind. We can feel relaxed. Purified senses. Our senses are contaminated by all our materialistic activities. We can purify them and we can be peaceful. So this is the better, all the benefits you get from chanting. Better concentration, memory, everything improves. Everything becomes auspicious by the chanting of the Holy Name. More efficient winner. So chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And be happy. Hare Krishna and be happy. So this Maha Mantra, these six, uh, 16 words, they are very powerful. You can see just three words, Hare Krishna and Rama. But in the form of the mantra, there are 16 words. So it's stated in the Vedas that these 16 words, they can take away all the dirt from the mind and from the heart simply by chanting the holy name. So let me come. Okay, so uh, japa is one way of chanting. There are two ways of chanting. We did kirtan at the beginning, and the other way is japa, chanting on the beads. So chanting on the beads is uh, personal, private meditation. We do it on our our own individually. We each. Each person has to have beads and they hold the beads and chant. Kirtan, we come together as a group, sit down together and have here in Mayapur, in previous years, we had things like Kirtan Mela. Many devotees would come and they'd have, I think also in Europe, they have things like uh, Radhadesh Mellows, isn't there something there in Radhadesh there? They have a kirtan. And then probably also in in Germany, they may have also some kirtan, some, sometimes kirtan mellow. So kirtan is very popular. People come together and chant. It's very nice to get a taste for the holy name. But the japa is also very important because it's our personal meditation on Krishna. Lord Chaitanya, he also had japa beads and he was also chanting on his japa beads every day. The Lord Chaitanya, he was showing everyone by his own example the importance of chanting the holy name. So when we get initiation, just like when I got initiation from Srila Prabhupada, 
Srila Prabhupada would ask us, how many rounds are you chanting? And we all, everyone had to say, at least 16. <laughs> Prabhupada gave this uh, quota to all of the devotees that we should chant 16 rounds minimum in a day. Why, why 16, people ask? Well, actually, initially, Prabhupada wanted us to chant more. <laughs> and Prabhupada describes how his own spiritual master had asked everyone to chant 64 rounds. Because 64 rounds is 100,000 names of the Lord. 100,000, and we would say 1 lakh. 1 lakh is 100,000. 100, so Lord Chaitanya had taught everyone should chant one lakh. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, Prabhupada's spiritual master, he also instructed everyone to chant six, 64 rounds in a day. But when Prabhupada went to the West, and he asked people to chant 64 rounds, people all said, it's impossible, we can't do it. It's too much. So, of course, very different environment. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was here in India a long time ago, maybe 90 years ago. So, very different civilization and society. Now, the situation has changed. People are restless. They're not very good in controlling the mind and senses. So Prabhupada understood it's going to be difficult for them to chant 64 rounds. So he suggested, all right, then you try to chant 32 rounds. But still they found it difficult. So then Prabhupada reduced it still further to 16. And then he said, all right, now this is the minimum. If you, everyone must chant at least 16 rounds. Because 16 rounds will take about two hours. People may take longer, depends how they chant. Some people chant slower, some people chant very fast. But on average, about two hours time, two and a half hours. So that's a reasonable time. Even if you go to other yoga societies, different meditation groups, you'll find they also meditate for two hours. But their meditation is silent. Buddhist meditation also, they sit in silence for a few hours, two hours. So we do our japa meditation. You see, of the two techniques, the technique with sound vibration is more powerful because the loud sound, the sound vibration controls the mind. To try to sit silently will make advancement very slowly and only with great difficulty. But when we chant the mantra, then we can make quick progress. So Prabhupada requested all the devotees, they should chant at least six, 16 rounds, minimum, told them. And he liked them to chant more, of course. So more chanting means you get more taste for the holy name and means you're getting more association with Krishna because in the Kali Yuga Krishna comes in his name. So the chanting of the name of the Lord very powerful. So we encourage all the devotees you know you try to do this chanting for yourself. It's not a waste of time rather it's the best use of time. You get the greatest purification you get the greatest benefit in chanting the name of the Lord. Okay, so are there any questions here today? And how many of you are chanting? I try to, to I try to make one one round per day. Can you I try. A little bit. One round. Mm -hmm. One round. One round. Yeah. 
15 are, are, are missing. 15 rounds are missing. Sorry? I missed 15 rounds. <laughs> yeah, you're missing 15, right? You're yeah, yeah. Rounds. Okay, so you have to try and increase. Sure. You know, you're doing one round, try to increase to two. You know, it's not a big jump up. Take it gradually, go from one to two, and then you can increase to three and four and five. You, and before you know it, as you, when you start to do more, you'll see how much pleasure it is and how much satisfaction there is in this chanting. It's very helpful, very beneficial. And it, it's the only way in this age, in the Kali Yuga, Lord Chaitanya quoted scripture, that there's no other way but the chanting. You try to do more chanting. One round takes you how long? Uh, seven, seven minutes. Oh, very quick, yeah. So, you know, very short time. And you can chant any time in any place. There are no rules about this. You can chant in the morning or in the evening. You can chant driving your car. You can chant when you're taking a shower. You can be chanting all the time. And the more you chant, the more you become spiritually enlivened. You awaken your spiritual soul. Spiritual existence becomes surcharged. So it all comes through the chanting. Will you please, you try to chant more? I will try, yes. Are you vegetarian? Yes, yes. You're, ve you're vegetarian? Yes. I am vegetarian. Oh, very good. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. cook for yourself? I cook for myself. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. You're not cooking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, I learned it in a, in, a, um, in the temple. Living in the temple, I learned to make chapati, cook dal, and vegetables. Oh, okay. Yeah. I yeah. worked in I worked in the kitchen for a while. Mm -hmm. okay. You saw how they cook everything, eh? Yes. Yes. And do you offer your food to Krishna? Yes. Oh, very nice. I have a little Krishna in the kitchen, so. He has some plates, some forks and knives. Okay, very nice. So that's good. So you know, you know the science, you know how to do everything. You just have to do more chanting and then you can, you'll be very pleasing to Prabhupada. Yes. Sure, Prabhupada likes all of us that we should chant. It, it gets a bit noisy here sometimes. <laughs> Other people running the taps. Okay, so you please try to chant more Prabhu. Okay, yes. And of course, we have this other devotee. He's all chanting 16 rounds, right? That's, uh, what's the Prabhu's name? Um, Michael. 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 Oh, right. Hare Krishna. I'm sorry. I wasn't sure if you were talking to me. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I have a, a, I don't know if it's a question, but it's more of a positive comment about yeah. Yeah. chanting, etc. Uh, uh, they say that the um, person who is devoted to Krishna is the uh, greatest yogi. And uh, and when we talk about yoga, sometimes we talk about myst um, mystical powers. And I noticed that um, if I if I do something uh, Krishna conscious, well, the uh, things happen in a way that um, my desires get fulfilled in the best uh, in the most pleasing way uh, possible. <laughs> Yeah, when you act for Krishna, things do go better for you, yeah? Yeah, sometimes things, uh, like yesterday, two things fell into place 
during the same uh, um, devotional service uh, session. <laughs> so it was like a simultaneous, like a really yogic uh, happening. Mm, wonderful. Yeah, event. <laughs> yeah. Krishna, Krishna is confirming everything for you. Krishna yes, exactly. Because uh, I wasn't, um, I wasn't waiting for any, I wasn't uh, expecting anything to happen anymore, you know, because every time I would pr perform cr uh, Krishna consciousness, I would uh, expect for something in, in, uh, in return. But this time I thought, hey, just, just do it for the, do some effort just without expecting anything maybe. And a lot of things happened that, that uh, proved that uh, uh, um, that's the wrong uh, um, conception of, the, of doing things. Okay. So can Krishna get, sometimes shows a sign to us. Krishna gives us a sign that he's, he's there, he's taking care, he's watching it. He's encouraging us. Yes, because sometimes we just give up. If I, for example, myself, I give up um, on uh, being positive and uh, just do uh, like uh, uh, good things just to, to get good things out of them, then actually uh, nothing good ever happens for prolonged amounts of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can be maybe complicated to understand, but uh, I think we get the point, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, Krish Krishna doesn't like us to waste our time. Just, you know, Krishna's, Krishna's there, and he's watching us. Sometimes, you know, he, he, he gives us a sign to, to encourage us, to help us, to come to him. But sometimes, you know, we just drag our feet. He's there in the heart. He's speaking to us as a super soul. He's speaking to us. And we yeah, say, I kind yeah, of yeah, lost yeah, faith. Okay. Lost faith. <laughs> yeah, faith, faith is very important, you know. You've got to keep faith. And you get faith when you're, the more you're with devotees. You have to be with the devotees. Of course, we get faith also. You read Prabhupada's books. We get faith also. You chant the holy name. You follow the process. The more you follow the process, and Krishna confirms to you what you're doing is the right thing. Well, things fall into place at funny times. And uh, I guess... Uh, I noticed that um, following devotees is important, but uh, much later than than, it's, than I should have, because it's actually a, like a, an integral part of integral part of uh, of Krishna uh, Krishna consciousness is uh, being around the others, I guess. Yeah, you don't want to get too far away from the devotees. You need to, you need to, of course, at this time, at this time, because of the, the this uh, virus, difficult to be with devotees. D you know, just, just so difficult. Everything is locked down. But you have to keep in touch. You have to keep that desire in the heart. And Krishna can help you. Every day, you got to, you know, every day, you, you got to try and, do some hearing and chanting, keep in touch. Don't go far, don't get too far away. Mm -hmm. Try to stay close, be with the, around the devotees. It's much safer. The more further you go away from Krishna, and the more danger, the more maya is there. So, the choice between Krishna and Maya, which way Not, do we want to go? Maybe there's, uh, uh, it, without the devotees, it's, it's uh, more natural, but actually 
not so much magic, whereas Maya is not so fun, <laughs> but is a very magical thing that's very destructive. <laughs> mm, definitely. Yeah, they definitely know Maya is not so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. You be careful out there. Hare Krishna. Jai. Okay. Thanks. So what, what about this guy? Anybody else like to talk? How is everybody else doing? Anybody else chanting rounds? Uh, me too. I have a, like a question, a little question. Um, um, so related to purifying the senses, so that you told that be, I told us before by um, listening different, uh, hearing music, songs, and uh, kirtan, different kind of meditation. Uh, you told us about uh, bhajanas. I don't know what's this. It's another meditation in a group or it's just a song, Indian song or bhajanas? Bhajan or bhajan. Yeah. Sorry, That's bhajan. Singing the songs. We just sing the devotional songs. Devotional songs. Yeah, in, we have a Vaishnava song book and in the Vaishnava song book there are different bhajans which are okay. songs all written about Krishna. Mm -hmm. about Krishna and about Lord Chaitanya and so sometimes the devotees like to sit and they will sing these different songs, the different bhajans. Okay, yeah, bhajan. Some songs are made up of all Krishna's names mm -hmm. like Yashomati Nandana Prajapara Nagara Gokularanjana Kana Gopi Paranadana Madana Manohara Kaliadamana Vidana. All different names of Krishna put together to make a song. This is, this is bhajan. Mm -hmm. right? Thank you. Bhajans. Bhajans, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People like to sing. So we sing songs about Krishna. The gopis. We sing about Krishna, Krishna's pastimes all day. So in the temples, when we come together with devotees, we also like to sing bhajans. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. There's a there's one there's one book. song book. And in that song book, there are different bhajans are there, different the different songs which we sing. There are many songs actually. Yeah, that song book. That, that, that songs we are feeling much better. Huh? <laughs> yes, with with um, listening to songs and singing, we are feeling much much better. Exactly. You Good. Be much yeah. more purifying of your all the senses and all your yeah. body and soul. Yes. Definitely, the sound vibration very important. To hear the transcendental sound mm -hmm. very purifying, very therapeutic, good therapy for the mind. The mind becomes okay. peaceful, calm. So you try to hear regularly. Are you chanting? The one round, is it? Uh, one yes, one one round per day. Yeah, you need to try to increase. I... You know, you can't just stick one round. You have to increase. Mm -hmm. You have to improve, do more. How long you've been chanting one round? Like um, one year. Okay, so one now you have one. to chant more than one round. Yeah. Well, already one year, it's too long. You need to chant more. Next, I want you to start chanting two rounds, at least two rounds. And then after one month, then you go to four rounds. It's not, it doesn't take long, but it's very important because you can connect to Krishna, make your relationship with Krishna the more you chant. Our real Krishna consciousness begins when we start to chant Hare Krishna mantra. So are you vegetarian? Uh, not really, but um, almost I'm eating vegetables and uh, fruits. Mm -hmm. So, 
just random sometimes uh, you cook or for yourself comments. yes i'm cooking yes 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 for myself yeah. i'm not with uh, <laughs> fast food and the others no you don't eat out huh good yes 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 so I'm trying to eat um, very clean and um, yeah. healthy and uh, yeah, tasty. Yeah. First of all, so, to be healthy. Do you know how to offer your food to Krishna? Yes, most of it uh, dried fruits like uh, almond, uh, raisins, uh, dried raisins. Uh, okay. And yeah. also rice. <laughs> rice, yeah. And I'm preparing. I uh, I used to. to offer also to the Krishna. Okay, very good. So you've tried to do this more chanting. I think yes. you'll, it can help you a lot. You can yes. Develop your relationship with Krishna through the holy name. Yes. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. So, any other devotees are there? Vaishnavi? Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I have a question. I am uh, chanting every day, uh, 16, uh, 20 rounds. So, like, uh, my doubt is, like, if I chant fastly, is that an offense? Like, I sometimes chant, uh, uh, force myself to chant fastly to complete my round so uh, i'm afraid if there is any offense in chanting fast uh, in a fast phase instead of uh, a slow phase of chanting the maha mantra okay uh, well how much time do you take when you chant fast uh, fast uh, like um, uh, 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 approximately yeah. two hours 20 rounds two hours yeah yeah well, that's okay. That's good. Yeah. One and a half to two hours. Uh, sometimes one and a half hours, even I complete uh, uh, 20 rounds. Uh, but that definitely I, I'm trying to hear, um, hear what I say when I chant, but still I do it in a faster phase. So in, will that become a, a fence? Uh, well, time. just try to hear. And try to, you know, you don't try, make sure you don't miss out words when you're chanting. Yes. You know, you have to say the whole mantra. So uh, just try to be careful. You don't want to be rushing all, every day. Some days you may have to rush, but not every day. So try to do the chanting properly. Yes, for Maharaj. Mm -hmm. You have to hear, you want to hear the sound of the mantra. Do you chant in your home or do you chant outside? At my house, in front of my altar, uh, Guru Maharaj. In front of your altar? Yes. Oh, very good. You have an altar at home? Ah, uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, yeah. Yeah, very nice. And you offer your food there? Um. Every day, uh, at least fruits, Guru Maharaj, uh, like if I'm not able to uh, uh, prepare my whole meal and I'm, I'm not able to offer sometimes, some days, but at least fruits I offer uh, a day. Yes. yes, you should. Do you eat outside? As Guru Maharaj? Do you eat meals outside? Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. I do eat uh, outside also, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, I eat meal outside also. Where I do you eat? Go. In the restaurant? Uh, yes, uh, in office we have a, a food court. Sometimes we, I eat uh, food there. Oh, okay. Vegetarian food, yeah, sometimes. But very rarely, most of the times I eat uh, house food. It's better. It's better you eat the house food. Try to yeah. take prasada. So, yeah, you try to do the chanting every day. Very good. Your family all vegetarian? The family? Yes, Guru Maharaj. I'm Vaishnavi sister. Yes, uh, Guru Maharaj. Hmm? I am sister of Vaishnavi Guru Maharaj. Oh. Nitya. Oh, okay, you're Nitya's sister. 
Yeah. 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 The Vaishnavi sister. Okay. Yes. You're in I Chennai. met you in. Uh, ah, yes, Guru Maharaj, right. Uh -huh. I met you in uh, the Bangkok when I came there. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, so how's the lockdown there? Uh, it is uh, the same way, Guru Maharaj. We are all at home. Uh, nobody is mo moving outside. Like uh, essentials are all available outside. So uh, no problem with the uh, basic vegetables, food stuff, and all. So everything is uh, uh, manageable, Guru Maharaj. No problem okay. in Chennai. Okay, so soon be over. We hope. Yes. Uh, yeah. Get back to normal life. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for chanting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Did Did you do the disciple course yet? Uh, I'm yet to do Guru Maharaj. I have to do. Yeah, I think at Chennai Temple they should do it. Yes, surely, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. yeah Sometimes. You can do it. Definitely, Guru Maharaj. I'm Hare seeing Krishna. the online courses. Yes. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Tanmay Prabhu. Uh, Guru Maharaj, we have Tanmay Prabhuji. He did yes. the poster and uh, he's a great support for us. You want to ask something, Tanmay Prabhu? Yes. Hare Krishna. Uh, it's a question about uh, what I was thinking recently, Guruji, that uh, I noticed Krishna's life story has three different uh, parts. One is when he was young and then when he moved out of Vrindavana and to Mathura to uh, take care of his maternal uncle. And then when the Mahabharata started. And when I'm chanting and meditating, I try to focus on um, Krishna's life and the stories that I know and I find really good blissful uh, I feel really good and most connected when I think of his childhood activities uh, so I just wanted to hear from you what is your thoughts on this well actually according to the Bhagavatam Srimad Bhagavatam Krishna's, we've got Krishna in Vrindavan, you've got Krishna in Mathura, and you've got Krishna in Dwarka. Now Krishna in Vrindavan is where he's the young boy. And then of course he was brought to Mathura for the wrestling match with Kamsa. So he wasn't in Mathura for very long before they moved, Krishna moved everyone from Mathura to Dwarka. But we say Krishna is perfect in Dwarka. He's more perfect in Mathura, but he is most perfect in Vrindavan. So it's Krishna's boyhood uh, and child, youth pastimes, which are the most attractive particularly youth pastimes, as a young boy, a youth, he, you know, he would take the cows, he would go in the forest, and he was also uh, doing rasa lila at that time also. So that's the highest of his pastimes. That's uh, Krishna as Shamsundar Krishna. There's Shamsundar Krishna who pleases the devotees, and there's Vasudev Krishna who kills the demons. Right? Shamsundar Krishna, his business is just to please the, please the devotees like the gopis. But Vasudev Krishna is the one who kills the demons. So Vasudev Krishna is like the Krishna who was there on Kurukshetra driving the chariot for Arjuna. This Vasudev Krishna who goes to Dwarka. So the the highest we say we give the great we say, we say the the perfection of Krishna's pastimes are there in Vrindavan, with the gopis and with Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj. Hmm. 
Do you understand? Yes, now it makes sense. Thank you, Prabhu. Sham, Sham Sundar Krishna is the Krishna playing the flute with two arms, the two arm form of Krishna, who plays the flute, calls the gopis, calls the cows. And Vasudev Krishna is a four arm form. So the form of Krishna is Shamsundra Krishna is more sweet because it's Krishna from Vrindavan, from the countryside. And the, in the relationships, it's, it's just more sweet and more pleasing. But in Mathura and in Dwarka, Krishna is the king or Krishna is the prince. So it's a different mood. Mm. So after Krishna had gone to Mathura and then to Dwarka, you know, after some time, then Krishna came back to Kurukshetra because there was a solar eclipse and there was to be a big function in Kurukshetra. So Krishna came all the way from Dwarka to Kurukshetra to observe the eclipse. And at that time, all the gopis had also come. They'd all come to see Krishna. But when they came from Vrindavan and they saw Krishna, they were not happy. They said, mm. we don't like this Krishna. He's not the same. We want the original Krishna. We want him as Shamsundar Krishna. So the gopis thought, we will take Krishna. We are going to take him back to Vrindavan. So this is the mood of Rathiyatra. The mood of Rathiyatra is bringing Krishna from Kurukshetra to Vrindavan. Because the gopis like sweetness. They don't like the opulence of Dwarka and Mathura. They don't like that big city life. They like the village, more natural, nature with nature, very beautiful. So the gopis, they like that kind of atmosphere. Thank you, Guruji. There's more where there's more sweetness, there's less opulence, but the sweetness is more pleasing, more satisfying. Where there's opulence, there's less sweetness. Rather, we just simply offer prayers and offer respect and bow and so on. That's uh, that's uh, the Vaikuntha mood. But in Vrindavan, is very everything is very sweet. And intimate. So we always think of Vrindavan as being the perfection of all places of Krishna. And Mayapur is not different from Vrindavan. Mayapur and Vrindavan are not different. Okay. And just as Krishna came in Vrindavan, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came into Mayapur. Lord Chaitanya is not different from Radha and Krishna. Radha and Krishna combine in the form of Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya is a place of mercy. We get the greatest mercy from Lord Chaitanya. He's helping all of us to become Krishna conscious. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you. Now I understand why Brindavan is so highly regarded. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh -huh. um, okay, Vaishnav. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Ramya, uh, we, uh, Guru Maharaj, I, two friends, uh, Ramya and Kalyani, they used to help me with the cooking every time when the program is there and they are chanting one round. Uh, yeah. She is Ramya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. oh, Hare Krishna, Ramya. How are yeah. you, Guru Maharaj? I'm fine, thank you. So situations becoming big, a bit better there now in Switzerland. 
Uh, yes, Mo Guru Maharaj. From tomorrow, we have school. <laughs> It's getting better. What happened? Will, will... Kids have uh, school from tomorrow. Sorry? Kids, um, kids have school from tomorrow. Oh, from one tomorrow, day. going to school, huh? Yes. From tomorrow, yeah, there's no lockdown. Day. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so, you'll be happy. you get some relief. <laughs> Go to school. It's we always pleasure to time. listen to you. Thank you so much. Thank mm. you so much. We uh, I used to wait for Saturday every time. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. So you try to do more chanting. Try to increase this chanting. Sometimes two. Sometimes two. Uh, still, I'm in. Uh, uh, you can one chant more. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you for your blessings. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Uh, so, so we finish there. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank you so much for your time and effort. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Kaiman, yeah. You have something to say, Ayman Prabhu? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, he, he, yeah. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhupada. Ki Jai. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh -huh.